Hello from Seoul. What is your favorite Korean dish? If you say Korean barbecue, you're gonna love this video so much. Today, I'll show you how to make the perfect Korean barbecue feast at home. Are you guys ready? Let's get started. Some of you might say, Aaron, even if I watch your video, I think I still can't do it because I don't have that fabulous barbecue grill plate or portable stove. If you didn't try because of these reasons, there's no need to worry about it. Just follow my lead. And if you use them in the house, they will trigger your fire alarm for sure. True story, it happened to me all the time. Plus, if your choice of the meat was pork belly, it's even worse. I'm pretty sure you will see yourself wiping the floor because of the oil splatters and it may take more than an hour. Two hours barbecue party and two hours cleaning party nobody wants to do that right that's why i don't use them in my house don't get me wrong i'm not a neat freak Korean barbecue is just cutting the meat into bite-sized pieces and enjoy it with various veggies and side dishes. That's it, nothing special. That's why I'm saying barbecue grill plate and portable stove are not really necessary. You can still feel the vibe at home with your frying pan and no more stove in your kitchen. It's like whatever you do on your steak, like river searing or sous vide, it is still steak, right? However, Korean barbecue definitely needs some stuff like side dish or stew. So let's start with stew first. I think the best friend of Korean barbecue is always this doenjangjigae, soybean paste stew. It doesn't matter what kind of meat you pick for barbecue, it just makes your Korean barbecue perfect. You can enjoy this doenjangjigae while having the barbecue or even after the barbecue because it is kind of ultimate finisher of Korean barbecue. Let's get some rice water first. You've never heard of it? I can't believe you missed that kimchi stew episode. I knew it. That's why the views are lower than usual. <clears throat> I just put a card up there so please go check after watching this episode. Anyways, it's the water you can get after rinsing the rice a couple of times. Of course, you can use tap water but this will enhance the flavor. Chop Korean radish or daikon into pieces. Since we're gonna cook this for a long time, I don't recommend cutting it too thinly. Put 4 cups of rice water, Korean radish and beef into the pot. You can use any cuts of beef, even the one from the freezer is okay. But I prefer to use the one with some fat because it will add more flavor to the Stew. Now, let's add 6 tablespoons of Korean soybean paste, 1 tablespoon of chili pepper flakes, 1 tablespoon of minced garlic, and let it boil for a while. Like any other soup or stew, the longer you boil it, the better it tastes. That's why I'm cooking stew first. While it's boiling, let's prep other ingredients. You will be needed green onion, chili pepper, zucchini, onion, mushroom, and tofu. You can use any type of mushroom, but I like using shiitake mushrooms because I think it makes the broth deep you don't have to cut the vegetables into very small pieces. While you are enjoying the barbecue, the veggies in the hot stew will get mushy and lose their shapes. If it's too small, I'm sure it will not look appetizing, right? So let's cut them into chunks. Put all the veggies into the stew. But we will keep the tofu until we serve it for presentation purpose. Doenjangjigae doesn't need other seasonings like soy sauce or salt. We only need Korean soybean paste. So at this point, take a sip of the broth and see if it's okay for you. If it tastes a little bit salty, you can add some water. If it's too bland or there's something missing, add more soybean paste. As I always say, there's no right answer in cooking. Everybody has a different palate, so follow your instinct. Some of you worry that you finish making it too early so it gets cold while preparing other dishes. It's okay. It is just stew. You can heat it up again. And you know what? If you do that, I'm 100% sure the taste will be even better. It's like a day-old lasagna tastes better. If you taste it after reboiling it, magic will happen to your stew. So how about making it earlier and boiling again right before you serve? Your guest will be impressed. While the stew is getting ready, let's make the magical Korean dipping sauce, samjang. I'm pretty sure among you guys, 9 out of 10 fell in love with Korean barbecue because of this samjang. 9 out of 10. So instead of getting the one from the supermarket, let me show you how to make authentic samjang. You will be needed Korean soybean paste, Korean chili paste, chili pepper flakes, corn syrup, and sesame oil. If you add garlic, green onion, and chili pepper, you will meet another level of samjang. Put 2 tablespoons of Korean soybean paste, 2 tbsp 
tablespoons of Korean chili paste, a half tablespoon of chili pepper flakes, one tablespoon of sesame oil, one tablespoon of corn syrup, one tablespoon of minced garlic, a half tablespoon of chopped chili peppers, one tablespoon of chopped green onions. Lastly, you need to add one tablespoon of plum juice, but if you don't have this, you can put one tablespoon of Sprite or 7-Up for the substitute. You might think it's weird, but actually, many restaurants use this. You will see this very often for other recipes. Let me surprise you later. This time, let's make pajori, green onion salad. Believe it or not, Claire makes a very good one. I showed her once and she mastered it. So I asked her to show how to make it. But Claire said no because she doesn't want to fade in front of the camera. Sorry about that. First of all, cut the green onion into long strips like spaghetti noodles. How? Cut the green onion in half and fold it like this. And then just slice it. In Korea, we have this kind of dedicated cutter but personally, I prefer not to use it because it makes me cry all the time. If you wanna see someone crying, let them use it. If you are crying because it's too spicy, put them into cold water for a while. Then the spiciness will go away and only pleasant flavor will remain. So while they are enjoying their privacy, let's make the dressing. Put 1 tablespoon of sugar, 2 tablespoons of chili pepper flakes, 1 tablespoon of soy sauce, 1 tablespoon of vinegar, a half tablespoon of fish sauce, and mix it well. I don't know how many times I said it, but let me tell you again. This fish sauce will not make the dressing fishy at all as you might think. Claire and I don't even go near fishy smell, so please try it once. Did I ever let you down? You will experience the amazing umami flavor. One thing you should remember here is that don't pour the dressing over the green onions all at once. Add little by little and mix it. For information, the reason why I'm mixing the salad now is I need to show you in front of the camera, but I recommend mixing it just before you are about to serve it. If you mix the salad too early, the green onion will get soggy, so it's not gonna look pretty on the table. The beauty of Korean barbecue is sam, which means wrap in Korean. You can use any type of lettuce, and if you have a Korean grocery nearby, try this perilla leaf. Because of its unique scent, you will either love it or hate it, but I think this goes the best with pork. Also, I think raw garlic and chili pepper are must-have items to enjoy Korean barbecue so please make sure to prep them before you start. Now we are ready to start. All you need to do is just grilling the meat. Today I brought samgyeopsal, pork belly, which I can say Korean barbecue 101. But as always, you can use any other meat that you want. If you want to have the best barbecue party, of course you should choose good quality meat. So if you are planning to have pork belly just like us, I recommend buying thick cut pork belly like mine. Most of the popular Korean barbecue restaurants serve this kind of thick pork belly and it means there will be some reasons for that, right? Of course grilling this kind of thick cut requires some grilling experience. But don't worry about it, I'll take you to Tasty Wonderland. First, when you grill this kind of thick meat, it's better to salt the meat beforehand and wait for at least 40 minutes. But I know you don't want to wait that long and same here, so I'll just skip it. Plus, in Korean barbecue, you dip the meat into the salt or sauce anyway, so it's not gonna be a problem. However, don't forget to get rid of any moisture from the meat with paper towers. This way, you can experience a more complete Maya reaction. Put some oil on a pan first. Some of you might want to ask, Aaron, the pork belly already contains a lot of fat. Why do you need that oil? The surface of the meat is not as flat as you think. So if you want to cook the meat evenly, add some oil first. This way, you can get beautiful golden brown throughout the meat. As a tip, I recommend using a pan with some height so that you can reduce oil splattering. If your mom sees oil splatter everywhere, well, you will be in trouble. I don't want to talok about it. Another good option is to use a wok. If you have thick pork belly like this, you probably can see skin or some fat on one side. Let's sear this part first like this. This is so important. This way, you can enhance the flavor of the pork. When it gets crispy golden brown, you can start searing the rest of it. In Korea, there's a myth that when grilling the meat, we should not flip it over so often. But it's not true at all. I recommend flipping over every 30 seconds so that the heat can penetrate evenly. When it turns beautiful golden brown, you can cut it into bite-sized pieces with scissors. However, if you are not so skilled at Korean barbecue, it's hard to do all these steps smoothly. If it takes so long, the meat that you cut earlier will become dry soon so you will taste something like crispy bacon. So I recommend moving them to the cutting board and cut them all at once with scissors or a knife. If you are patient enough, you can rest the meat for a while but you know, Claire can't. She's looking at me. Okay, let's put it back over medium 
high heat. In this step, try to make other parts golden brown too. Again, you need to flip them over every 30 seconds. How does it look? Every side is equally golden brown, right? Now, it's done. There are many kinds of dipping sauces that you can enjoy with Korean barbecue. I like to dip it in the salt and pepper or wasabi, but Claire loves to combination of salt and pepper with sesame oil. It's all up to you. Just bring what you prefer. Put everything onto the table and display nicely. Finally, it's time for a Korean barbecue feast. Let's bring our taste tester. Claire. Wow. <laughs> 여태까지 촬영했던 것 중에 비주얼은 제일 압도적이다. Dip it in the salt. Mm. 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 Why do you need to use the soft 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 soft